G'day everyone, it's been about seven months since I've touched the Tirana, so I thought I'd better get back into it. And I've finally got it on the rotisserie, as you can see, upside down, now it's easy to work on. Um, I've got this quarter panel here, rear quarter, I've just made a piece for it, which I'm going to, I was going to butt weld it, but I think I'm going to put a flange on it, and weld it with a flange. I've also got the shocker towel, it was rotted out, so I can cut this one out of a UC that I've got. I bought a UC that I can use for spare parts. And that'll go in there. Before I do that, I am um, going to make a panel that's going to sit in here. I'm going to have to weld that in first. Okay, I've had to reshape this a little bit to make it fit. I've put some flanges on it. And where the weld's going to go, I've just put some weld through primer. Now I'm just going to do a final fitting, and then I'm going to weld it into the gap down there. As you can see, it's not quite right yet. I've got to get that angle a little bit tighter so it lines up. And the same on the back. Where is it? It's just not quite right. So I'm going to take it off again, do a bit more bending, and see how it goes. Back into it again. And I've nearly got that quarter finished. I just have to clean up the weld a little bit more up there, and that'll be done. And now I'm about to cut this one out and replace this. For this one, I've got a, um, a panel from Rare Spares that doesn't fit that well. You just got to modify it a little bit to make it fit. So I'll do some cutting and then I'll be back. Okay, I've just cut out the rust in this quarter, and now I've put the patch panel on the back. And I just want to get a rough idea of how big it needs to be, so I'm going to put some spray paint like this. And I'm going to use that as a marker to give me a rough idea of how big the patch has to be cut. Got the quarter panel cut and just tacked in a little bit, as you can see. Few tacks. Looks to fit not too bad. So I'm just going to keep tacking it all the way around, weld it in, and then see how it looks. Just to show what I'm doing, I'm taking these out and just plugging them up as I go. Just like that, if you can see it. I might try and weld one with the camera and see how that goes. I nearly got this quarter in, but there's a little hole here that the patch panel doesn't go big enough and I wasn't sure how I was going to fix it. It's a real awkward shape, so I've got this little piece here that I've welded a piece of um, coat hanger on to hold it. I'm going to have to put that in first, somehow it's going to sit in there, and then I'll have to make another little piece for that bit there. I'm on the second shocker tower now, which is not as bad as the first one. As you can see, there's a bit of cut out there, there and there. I've got rust converter on this rusty area in here. And I just got a bit of paper, I don't know if you can see, and rubbed it on the patches. And that's given me the three shapes that I'll need to cut out. I've got my three patches ready. As you can see, I'm quite happy with them. They fit quite good. And now I'm just about to weld them in. I just got a little bit more cleaning up to do, and then that's done. Another bit of rust out the road. A couple more, and then we're finally done with full welding. Here's something that um, you might want to think about. If you're going to put the car on the rotisserie, maybe put some bolts in these holes here. 
because I've lost my bolt holes. As you can see, it's fallen inside. So what I'm going to do to the other ones is I'm going to put bolts in them to hold it. And I'm going to try and retrieve this one. I've got my trusty Bundy and coat hanger and see how it goes. I got it. All I've got to do now is chuck a bolt in it and always keep a bolt in it. And hopefully it won't fall out again. So it's just something you might want to keep in mind. If you end up putting your car in the rotisseries, just leave a bolt in each hole, in just even in one of the holes, just like that, and um, then it won't happen. Okay, all done. With most of the rust done, now I want to try and get some paint on, so I just brought a sandblaster and just sample a little bit here, a little bit in there. Now I'm going to sandblast the bottom and then put some KBS on it. So I'll be back shortly. Well, 25 minutes of sandblasting and about 25 kilos of glass beads. That's how much I got done. The machine was starting to block up a bit, so I think I'm going to have to get a, a better filter for the air compressor and then I'll get back into it. That's the sandblaster I bought. Cost me 150 bucks, and each bag of the glass costs about $45 for 25 kilo. And when you use it, make sure you use protective clothing because the sand gets everywhere. It'll get in your eyes, your nose, and you don't want to breathe that shit. So I got I wore a mask, a bonnet over the top of my head, long gloves, and the sand still got into my face somehow. And the sand gets everywhere. If you have a look, there's sand here. Sand up on the top shelf there, there's just sand everywhere. So it makes a lot of mess, but the end result you'll be happy with. Oh, just before I go, that's that first shocker tower that I did. It's in. Now I've ordered some flared guards that should get here in about three weeks I think the guy said and then I'm gonna have to cut these I have to fit the doors on cut the doors as well but that'll be in the next video